I hope you're all staying well and healthy. Our videos are filmed well in advance and things have been changing rapidly on a day-to-day -day basis. So we wanted to take a minute to talk to you guys in real time. When we left Argentina and flew back to the United States, just like anybody coming from a different country or coming off of a cruise ship, we followed the CDC's recommendations to self-quarantine for 14 days. Honestly, we would have loved to fly directly to Utah, but it just wasn't an option for us. Our 14-day quarantine passed, but that doesn't change the seriousness of the situation. We've been monitoring our own health, and even though we have never shown symptoms, we could still be asymptomatic carriers. Returning to one's home is considered essential travel, and if you've watched our videos for an extended period of time, you probably know we would never want to put other people's health at risk. Obviously, airports are a huge transmission point, so the safest way to get home would be to drive quickly, directly, and without any contact with anyone else packing all of our own food, sleeping in the vehicle, wearing masks and gloves when we stop for gas, wiping everything down before and after we touch it. Please keep in mind that we are making these decisions very carefully, and we would never condone or recommend anybody to leave their house for any reason that is not essential. Now is not the time to adventure around on a lighthearted road trip, but to get home, stay home, and stay safe. We just wanted to get that message across to you guys. And with that being said, enjoy today's episode. We're here in my parents' house in Washington, DC, and we have some really exciting news to share with you guys today. We're actually just sitting up here in the living room, enjoying our last day here in Washington, DC. We are enjoying a nice sunny day actually, but we have a little bit of a surprise for you. So if you guys have been following our journey, basically we left our home in South America and now we're escaping the pandemic as much as possible. We've made it to Washington, D.C. So we actually got a new rig. Our van is left in Argentina, and it's going to be there for what we're anticipating to be months, maybe longer. A lot of people probably have an opinion on how long it's going to be before we can go back, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, and we needed a vehicle. Our van is our everything. It's our home and our vehicle all rolled into one, so coming back to the States is great because we have our family and our support system nearby, but we don't have anything else. So this was definitely, um, it was essential for us to find a way to get around once we return to the States. and. I don't know, if there's been a silver lining to this whole situation, I think this is it, and we're pretty excited about it. You guys wanna go take a look? All right, we're gonna go outside and show you guys our new rig. One thing I wanna let you know ahead of time is it's not what you're expecting. It's been really difficult to shop for anything in this environment, especially because we're all trying to stay safe. So they're making it really easy these days by offering no contact deliveries and fully online purchasing for different types of rigs, which has made it really safe and uh, given us a lot of peace of mind. Hopefully this works out the way we want it to. <laughs> So this vehicle is going to be very helpful for not just getting us to Utah, but for some future projects that we have. And I think if things go south and this becomes a full-blown apocalypse, this vehicle will definitely take care of us. You guys ready? I know what you guys are thinking. It's a little bit different than what you were expecting and you think we're crazy. I totally get it. <sighs> Honestly, I'm kind of right there with you. It was a pretty crazy decision and a lot of people are probably wondering why we didn't get another van. And that's because I don't have time to build out another van right now. And we have another project that is on the horizon. So we needed to get a truck because it's gonna help us with this project. Also, we needed to transport ourselves across the United States. And like I said earlier, if the apocalypse is upon us, this is gonna be our survival vehicle. So we need a vehicle to get around and Trent has been really excited about a truck like this. I finally agreed to it because we got it at a really great deal. As you guys can see, this truck is made by Ram, the same people that made the ProMaster, and the ProMaster has done wonders for us over the years, never given us any problems. However, these trucks are really expensive, and this one has been in at least a couple crashes, and it has some mechanical issues. 
I'm going to try and fix all of these mechanical issues and I think all of the cosmetic things have been replaced or repaired and it's been looking really nice because if you look from the outside, it looks like a brand new truck, but it's actually not. It's over eight years old. It's got quite a bit of miles. And like I said, it's got a lot of things wrong with it, but I'm gonna to try to fix all those things. So obviously, Trent is super excited. We're gonna be loading this thing up and in the morning, we're gonna put it to its first true test. We are hitting the road. driving all the way across the United States, which means we're gonna be going through a lot of different climates. We could run into snow, rain, hail, there could be a tornado in our future. We don't really know, so we're gonna cover everything up that goes in the bed with a tarp in case we run into any inclement weather. Well, we have a little bit of a problem on our hands. We uh, started the truck to get it uh, warming up and before we went to leave, uh, the doors got shut while it was running and the doors were locked. And all the keys are inside. <laughs> so I think we're gonna try to call AAA and hopefully it doesn't take them all day to get here. It's great. Things were going way too smooth this morning. We got up on time, the, vi the van, the truck was packed smoothly. Everything was good to go. We were literally just closing the doors and ready to hug my parents goodbye. And all of a sudden, everyone realized the doors are all closed, the truck is running, the doors are locked. Remember yesterday when I said that this truck's kind of older? New trucks have features where you can't lock the keys inside them. This truck doesn't. We're here to stay, Mom. <laughs> Something that thin but strong but flexible to get in. Yeah, it's a, it's a nightmare. So we called AAA. Hopefully, they get here in the next, I don't know, hour. It's kind of a debate because we're in a weird situation with the world. Hopefully, they're not super backed up with other things they have to do this morning. We do have about 15 or 16 hours of driving ahead of us, but luckily, we're somewhere safe. Um, the dog is not in the car. There's no like kids in the car. So we're just gonna have some breakfast and wait for AAA. Literally everything is in the car except for Frank and me and Allie. If you or I were stuck in the car, this wouldn't be a problem. No, even if Frank was in the car, we could try to like call him over to like accidentally step on the unlock button. No such luck. <laughs> Maybe this was a plan by my mom to yes, make us stay should. a little bit longer. <laughs> Thank you so much. I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, stay safe. stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so you too. Well, thankfully, AAA showed up. They had the proper tools to get the door popped open for us, and now we're ready to go. But unfortunately, we made breakfast, so we're gonna go scarf this down. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, your help. <laughs> It's time to actually hit the road now. Start the truck with us inside it, no doors locked. <laughs> Well, I do have to say it feels extremely luxurious to be able to just cruise on the highway at cruise control, go as fast as we want, the ride is nice. I'm really digging the new truck, I'll be honest. We're about two hours into our drive. We have about 30 hours left before we're gonna get to our final destination in Utah. I'm not sure how far we're gonna make it today, but we're gonna try and get basically as far as we can. We're really only going to be stopping for gas and then if we have to use the bathroom, we're gonna do so at the gas station when we get gas. We pack a lot of snacks, a lot of food, so we shouldn't have to stop for food in the next basically two days. Frank's bed is in the back now. It's like behind my seat, and I don't think he really likes that. He's used to like riding in between us or on one of our laps. So Frank's having a hard time adjusting, but I think we're adjusting to truck life pretty well so far. So like we explained earlier, a big part of why we're going to Utah is because that is where our home is. That's where all of our documents are registered, our licenses, our mailing address, everything is in Utah. So that's basically where we're going to be until everything blows over. These two weeks in DC were our quarantine weeks. So we feel pretty good about how healthy we are. We haven't come into contact with anyone for two weeks. So even if we were asymptomatic carriers, we should be we should be safe to travel, but we're still gonna take every precaution we can and not touch, talk, or get close to anybody and keep everything super clean, just, just to be super safe. We're gonna show you guys our procedure at the gas station when we do have to fill up. I'm gonna make sure we are extremely safe, and if we do happen to be asymptomatic carriers, we're gonna clean everything we touch after we touch it just so that we don't have to worry about passing anything on to anybody else and for anybody that's concerned about us traveling across the country literally we are just going home from argentina but as soon as we entered the united states we needed to self-quarantine for 14 days ali's parents house was the closest and easiest place for us to do that so we followed the cdc's recommendations now we're continuing traveling home got done going to the bathroom inside the gas station I can't really take you guys in while we go to the bathroom one because we're going to the bathroom two because I wear a glove on one hand I take a Clorox wipe in the other hand I've got a mask on anything that we touch inside the gas station I use the gloved hand and then after I touch anything I use the Clorox wipe to disinfect wash our hands disinfect the glove again after we touch anything on the way back to the truck and then we get in the truck the glove has been cleaned, it's gonna be reused. The mask will be reused as well. I think we only need to gas up maybe three times in order to make it to Utah. One down, two to go. We've readjusted a little bit. Frank is much happier up front, so he's riding at my feet. And uh, I just realized what my hair looks like. I'm sorry guys, this is what happens when you wake <laughs> up at 6 a.m. Give me that Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
be really careful here. I'm obviously a little concerned, but I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. You got this. Just don't uh, don't try to get close to anything. Just... Am I being a jerk? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this is basically the first time that Ali is driving the truck, and we're driving it down the highway. So you basically just get it up to speed, set it in cruise control, and it does the rest. I have a lot of faith in Ali, but. I just, uh, maybe I'm a control freak. I don't know, I just like to drive and in our vehicles, I just like always like driving. I don't know. You talk as if I've never driven a car before. I know, Allie, she's totally self-sufficient. Probably anybody could drive this and there'd be no issue whatsoever, but like, I just always worry. I'm always worried about things. Also, in know. the United States, the highways are pristine, amazing, and there's no one on these roads right now. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's, that's actually the number one thing that makes driving across the country in the United States so freaking easy. I really appreciate that part of the United States and I've missed it. I like this. Yeah. Uh, I could get used to this. The reason we're switching is so that I can come over here and try to take a little bit of a nap so that I can continue on the rest of the drive. We have to drive 16 hours today and 16 hours tomorrow to make it there in two days. Uh, we've done 11 hours. No, nine hours. We have seven hours left. Allie's gonna do a couple hours and then I'm gonna take back over. All right. <sighs> I'm back. I spent probably a good three hours uh, sleeping, kind of trying to sleep on the center console with the pillow. It worked okay. And I guess while I was asleep, I don't know if you guys can see how many bugs are on the windshield. We were attacked. We must have gone through like the biggest swamp in all of <laughs> Are we in Illinois now? We are in Illinois. We made it to Illinois. We have a short passage through Illinois, and then we go to Missouri. Or as some people like to call it, Misery. I think it's Missouri. I don't have any hard feelings uh, against Missouri. I don't know why people don't like it. I don't either. I, I just have heard I, people say that. We've driven St. Louis, and it's beautiful. Actually, yeah, St. Louis is really cool. Really nice. So. We need to clean this windshield. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to become a problem. So hopefully at the next gas station, I'll be able to like squeegee it off. Um, I think it's time for dinner. Are you ready for our deluxe dinner? Hit me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ham and cheese sandwich. Oh, amazing. The reason we're having sandwiches for dinner is because we've decided to not stop for any food during the entire trip. We're minimizing our stops because we don't want to come into contact with anybody and, or spend money. I guess we're just trying to be cheap, but really we're just trying to be as safe as possible. So we've packed all of our own food for the entire drive. We're only stopping for gas. That's it. We have sandwiches, we have cereal, we have milk, we have like eight bags of chips, we have cookies, we got donuts. I think we have enough sustenance to get us all the way to Utah. It's just whether we can like actually handle it. <laughs> but I don't want to get sick, so I'm not going anywhere to get food. But we're going to eat now. We'll see you guys at the grocery store. At the grocery store? <laughs> we're going to eat now. We'll see you guys at the gas station. <laughs> cool. We had our dinner. I had a nap. We stopped. We are fueled up. You're sanitized? I'm sanitized, I'm as clean as a whistle. Go ahead and take those wipes. Beautiful. All We're right. We're about to get back on the road, baby. We are making the terrible decision to sleep in the van, I mean, just sleep in the truck. We really don't wanna go into a grocery store. I keep saying grocery Yeah, store. you do. <laughs> so we're making the terrible decision of sleeping in the truck. We really don't want to go into a hotel because we don't know how these hotels have been cleaned, what they've been exposed to, who's been in there before us. And these seats, they, they lean back pretty far. We've each got a blanket and a pillow. 
And this is like a hundred times better than any airplane I've ever tried to sleep on. So I'm just assuming that tonight is going to be a smidgen better than airport, airplane sleep. Also, we've been driving for almost 17 hours, so I can barely make sentences right now. Oh, look out. Lay down, Frank. Lay down. So I apologize if I sound like I'm stumbling with my words right now. Me and Frank and Allie are about to hit the sack. It's been a crazy day of driving and traveling, and I miss the van. I gotta say, I really miss the van. We're adjusting to truck life, but obviously this is a little bit different than what it would normally look like um, when we're traveling in our vehicle. So, staying positive, having a good time. It's like camping. This is just like a fun, different version of camping. <laughs> we're roughing it. We're just roughing it, yeah. <laughs> so, we have another 15 or so hours of driving for tomorrow, but I think this is where we are going to let you guys go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along on this adventure with us, basically traveling halfway across the United States in the middle of this pandemic, trying to get home to Utah. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you guys in Utah. Adios guys, see you on the next one.